Friends, we gather on these summer Sundays delighting in the glory of this time of year. From here in our sanctuary to cottages, campsites, and virtual spaces near and far, we make up the community of Parkminster. Being together in this time and in these places, we lift up our voices with praise and delight. We are the body of Christ. We are connected by the Spirit. And so we light candles together this morning to remind us of that truth. And just as the flames move to the currents of the air and music moves our spirits, may we know God's presence in inspiration, challenge, comfort, and community. And so let us continue with this time of gathering with our statement of welcome. Good morning. I'm Wendy Ridgway, and welcome on this sunny and bright Sunday morning. Please join me in our responsive land acknowledgement and statement of welcome. We begin our service with gratitude and respect as we remember together that this land, this planet, is sacred. We are on holy ground. Earth is our only home. We are bound to it and all who live here. In this summer season of green and growth, we are grateful for the way the earth sustains all life. We lament that we have not paid attention to our deep relationship with the earth. We commit to learning and practicing better stewardship. We have a binding relationship with the Haudenosaunee, the Chinatan, and the Anishinaabe people who have cared for and shared this land for millennia and with other indigenous people for whom we live, with whom we live. We lament that settler people, governments, and the church have rarely respected this relationship. Treaties and trust have been broken. We all live with the consequences. What could trust look like? We commit to live into God's desire in all our relationships, which moves us all towards hearing, healing, and justice. We live in hope. Seeking true community, we welcome all who have no church home, need strength, and are seeking deep meaning. Welcome to those who have doubts or who do not believe. Welcome to those whose faith is sure and to those who believe but who are asking large questions. Welcome to visitors and familiar friends. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers, fathers, youth, children, couples, and single people. Welcome to people of all colors, gender identities, abilities, and sexual orientations. Welcome to each other. Welcome to each who is seeking an understanding of community and what it means to accompany one another. As we come together as church, we hold one another in gratitude and pray that we will be strong together, faithful together, and loving together. We seek blessing as we welcome the great gift of spirit in us, through us, and among us. Thanks so much, Wendy. Uh, so just touching on some announcements this morning, if you are here in the sanctuary and you have an announcement you'd like to share, I just invite you to come forward and you can do so from the lectern mic. And for those of us that are on Zoom, if you have an announcement, just type that for me in the chat and I'll invite you to share it in just a moment. Uh, as I mentioned last week, a summer tradition here at Parkminster is sharing our faith stories. And I'm so pleased that we're hearing some again this year. 
This morning, Joan Googler will be sharing her story with us a little later in the service. And so I want to say thank you to Joan for doing that. Uh, looking forward to the weeks ahead as well with others. And if you're interested in sharing yours, you can just reach out to me and let me know. And I'm happy to fill you in on what, what's expected for that. Uh, Neil is away this morning and returns next Sunday, so we welcome back Cynthia Hebert, who is with us again this morning. Thank you so much, Cynthia. We are grateful for your presence and for your gifts of music with us. Uh, also, a reminder to folks that Joe is away on his vacation until August the 2nd, and that our office administrator, Melanie, has been away but returns to the office this Tuesday, July the 12th. Uh, for those who are with us here in person in the sanctuary, it is always wonderful to see you, and I hope you can join us outside for refreshments following the service, and thanks to those who helped coordinate that this morning, as well as to our ushers, greeters, AV team, and Wendy, who is this morning's lay reader. We are looking for some help uh, for the rest of July with ushering, greeting, refreshments, and more. And there is a sign-up sheet in the foyer that if you'd be able to help in the weeks ahead, we'd certainly be grateful for that. And just a reminder to the folks on Zoom, if you are having any technical difficulties, which we've already had this morning but solved with thanks, I think, to Kate, who gets some credit, um, just let the AV team know and then they'll help you out. I am not seeing any other announcements this morning. So let us continue then with our time of gathering and our opening hymn. It is found in the Red Voices United Hymnal. It is number 296. This is God's Wondrous World. Please be seated. And so as we hear a story from our faith tradition and listen for the word of God within it, let us prepare ourselves with prayer. And so I invite you to join with me in the words on the screen. Let us pray. Holy One, speak to us through your word today that we may hear you calling us out of the wilderness places in our lives and into new places you have promised to show us. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. And so as we reflect on our time together, I'll turn things over once again to Cynthia, who is going to share a ministry of music.
This morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. I'm reading from the message translation of the Bible. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give up everything I own to the poor, and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth, and what we say about God is always incomplete. But when complete arrives, our incompletes will be cancelled. When I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like any infant. When I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, love extravagantly, and the best of the three is love. This is good news for all who need it. May we be blessed with a deep need for grace. And so I invite you to turn once again to your Voices United Red Hymnal as we sing together hymn number 644. And Joan, I'll invite you to come forward during that hymn as you'll share your story after that. So 644 in Voices United.
hadn't known that hymn until I was a member of Trinity, and it has become one of my favorites, and I hope that you like it too. Most of you will know me as a recent returnee to Park Minster, but some of you will remember my belated husband Ernst and I from 22 years ago. It is good to be back. Don't worry, I am not going to give you my life story. Rather, I would hope that after a brief background, I might share with you what has contributed most of all to my faith journey. It may surprise you to know that it wasn't my diagonal training or our years as overseas workers with the church in Nepal. When I transferred my membership in May, Reverend Joe mentioned that I had been a diagonal minister for 62 years. I would just like to clarify that although I was designated a deaconess in 1959, I only served two churches in Cornwall and Ottawa, where I met Ernst. We were married in 1966 and spent the following four and a half years in Nepal, where Joy and Peter were born. Upon return, Ernst went to Western University for his MBA to ease out of engineering and into management, and his study became a nursery for Stephen. While we were active in any church we joined in the years that followed, it didn't seem possible to go into working in a professional way. I did serve as director of outreach for one year, however, in a Presbyterian church in Simcoe. In Tilsonburg, I returned to teaching English as a second language for five years. From 1972 to 1992, when we moved to Kitchener, my faith journey had its ups and downs, like most of us have. What stands out was my continuing education, I'll call it, in small groups. And this is what I will highlight. And thank you, Roxy, for paving the way by speaking of your experiences last week in taking the course at Western under Professor Gerard, whose wife, Andre, I was so pleased to meet when a member here at Parkminster. And we didn't even correspond, or we didn't even <laughs> connect with one another to uh, make this happen. One workshop was at Five Oaks in Paris, Ontario, called Telling My Story, Sharing a Faith. Twenty of us were a test group before the material went to print. We were in pairs, then small groups, and then the larger group, our faith deepening as we took turns sharing a time when God felt real to us. This was what Indian theologian D.T. Niles described as witnessing. One beggar telling another beggar where to find food. If I was to give an example of perhaps I, something I might have shared, um, it would be after Ernst's death when we were planning a memorial service a month later and a celebration of his life in our backyard in Grand Bend where we were living in his retirement. And we were moving the picnic tables around so that people could use them later on, tables that he had made, and one of which is outside the church here. Anyway, um, all of a sudden, a great and swooping sound from the trees came to our ears, and we looked up, and it was hawks, a whole, I don't know whether you'd say flock, or anyway, a whole group of them. Well, it was just such a Pentecostal moment, really. Here we were, getting ready for a service for Ernst, and in his memory, and we just knew that God was with us when this happened. I think it was what a friend of mine, Twyla, called a God moment. Another group to which I belonged used Julia Cameron's book, The Artist's Way. It was all about creativity, which I never thought I had, based on my inability to paint, act, or dance. I had confused talent with a much deeper sense of God-given gifts that we all have. 
it was wonderful at age 60 that to grow spiritually by pursuing daily activities like keeping a journal called Morning Pages, walking alone and listening, and going on an art estate once a week, which could be anything from going to a greenhouse or choosing wallpaper, for example. These ordinary activities were transformed and got the creative juices flowing. We met weekly to share our discoveries. This and Cameron's sequel, The Vein of Gold, gave me new direction thanks to the writer's insights and the group's affirmation. The Spirit of God moved among us. At our church in Simcoe, a study called Practical Christianity had come, had some innovative assignments. We were passed, we were paired off with a different person in a group, in the group each week with whom to check in regarding their assignment. At our weekly session, we would see a film, for instance, one about Jesus being a clown, I remember vividly, that provoked discussion, and then we would be assigned a task related to the material. For example, we might be asked to sit in an emergency waiting room, hospital waiting room, to emphasize, empathize with other people and what they were feeling and speak to at least one person. One woman in our group felt these assignments were too much and was going to quit, but she was back the next week. I returned to Five Oaks, as I have many times over the years, to meet with others in a common life community four or five times a year to share our faith journey as I am doing here. And that's where I met Don Linkletter. For a while, he was in a part of our group. And we decided that we would each have a chance to tell our story of our faith journey so that we'd get to know one another at a deeper level. And after all that was done, we tried to support Five Oaks by giving money and time to some of their projects, like a library in the Indigenous Center on the grounds, and also enabling a group from Toronto of women who were single and ostracized because of their financial situation to come to a place like Five Oaks. And I've left the best to the last. Here at Parkminster, I attended a Listening for God group where I got to know Elna Robertson and Liz Ford and others. And I'll never forget our discussion of a small good thing, a story by Raymond Carver in one of the volumes of Listening for God, of which there were quite a few. And these were all American writers we, we thought there should be a Canadian edition, but at any rate, um, we uh, would read the story at home and then come together and discuss it. And there were excellent discussion questions. Uh, some of you may know the story of a small good thing about a young couple who had a son who was coming up to his eighth birthday and the mother wanted to get a cake and have a special design on it and his name. And so she went to a local bakery where she didn't know the baker and he was an older kind of grumpy man, but she didn't expect anything more for some reason. Anyway, she went away and in the meantime, the son was in a car accident. And although initially he got up and seemed okay, and the driver went on, he was hospitalized because at home he just became very limp and comatose and the mother was very anxious about him. And in hospital for two or three days, he just slept, didn't wake up. And even the medical staff thought that was very unusual. And they got to the point where they were going to try surgery because there was something wrong with the skull. And, and he died. Well, you can imagine the anguish and despair of the parents 
a young couple who had this boy as their only child. And in the meantime, both of them had received calls from the baker wondering why they hadn't picked up the cake. And they didn't, he didn't say, actually, that he was the baker, but he did mention the name Scotty that was on the cake. And it just seemed, finally, to dawn upon Anna, I believe the mother's name was, Anne, that it was this baker who had been calling and calling and interrupting any time that they had been at home to get refreshed. And refreshed. So they decided to go to the bakery and give him what for, and their language was not very polite. And they really, the mother, in giving vent to her grief, was very angry and finally said their son had died. Well, you can imagine the poor man and what he felt. And he asked their forgiveness time and time again. And then eventually, he just knew that perhaps they were hungry, that they hadn't eaten or slept for days. And so they sat down. He invited them to sit down at a table. And he brought out of the oven freshly baked rolls and to encourage them to eat and eat. That it was just one small thing, he said, that he could do. And they had coffee. And they never left, at least not for a long time. And so one of the questions for discussion afterwards was the following. Carver has said, I don't know if I believe in God, but I do believe in miracles. How does a reader who does, in fact, believe in God experience a small good thing? Guarding against the tendency to turn it into what we might want to, it to be, or to say, what might a genuinely religious interpretation of this story be? Well, you can imagine, there were all kinds of answers. Not unlike communion, if you think in terms of what we do when we share communion. All of these opportunities for growth in my Christian life were sadly missed when we were in Nepal, but that is another story. I mentioned it here to highlight the opportunities we have in Canada and in the United Church to learn and grow, whether it is by Zoom or in person. What a wealth of opportunities for spiritual growth there are here at Parkminster. I sense that there is still an emphasis on listening for God even though the books are no longer available. For example, the, the Committee on Diversity and the people who reach out to refugee families or the people at the Better Tent City and you know how many other groups there are that have been formed just so that people can really try to be of some service in the church and in the community. And they're listening for God as we do when we come together for worship through the hymns, through the prayers, through the sermons, through the windows. But we also need to listen for God, I believe. And this is the message that came to me as I was preparing this. To the news, of course, and to our neighbors and in places that we might not even think that God is present. But I am so glad that I've been a member of the Lenten Pause Group led by Reverend Joe, where we at times have had times of meditation and journaling as well as dialogue after watching a short film. And I will end by saying how much I have appreciated being led back to a wor working and worshiping community of faith. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Joan, for your words, for sharing some of your story with us. We are equally blessed to have you in our midst and 
thank you for just sharing part of your story with us this morning and reminding us how much we are connected not only with each other here in this place, but into the community and beyond. And so as we reflect on Joan's words this morning, we'll join together in our next hymn. And our hymns this morning were chosen by Joan. They're very special to her, so we thank her for that. I invite you to turn to hymn 595 in the Red Voices United Hymnal, and we'll sing together. Please be seated. Friends, thank you for your ongoing support of the ministry and mission of Parkminster United Church and the United Church of Canada through the Mission and Service Fund. Because you give, the reality of love's presence and persistence is revealed in this place and in the world. And so let us pray. Holy One, we join with you in the joy of giving. You give us life and breath. You fill the world with beauty and our hands with bounty and our hearts with the desire to give. Accept these gifts and ourselves in your service. In the name of love, we pray. Amen. And so, friends, staying in this time of prayer, let us come together and share the yearnings, the struggles, the joys of our lives. And if you have any concerns or blessings that you'd like to share this week, uh, for those in the sanctuary, I'll come down in just a moment with a handheld mic, and you're welcome to share. And for those on Zoom, you're welcome to type in the chat, and I will share those in a moment. And again, just a blessing for Joan for hearing her words this morning. We thank you. And for Cynthia and all of her gifts of music today, and for all who have contributed in worship and our time together this day, we say thanks. Do I have any takers for the microphone? You're going to be quiet this morning. Oh, Cynthia, okay. On July 5th, uh, 25 years ago, uh, we were married, my husband and I were married at Bob Hudgens Cottage. Oh my goodness. Well, we know that name, Bob Hudgens. Happy anniversary. That's wonderful. Thank you, Cynthia. 
Anyone else? Whoa. Okay, well, maybe it's a good thing because this mic is live. <laughs> Let me just check the chat. <clears throat> well, I was seeing online, Joan, your, your daughter, Joy, uh, was just how proud she is of you and for sharing your story and your stories today. All right, well, seeing no other prayers coming up on the screen at the moment, let us take what we've heard and let us take what's those in our heart as we come together for our prayers of the people. Let us pray. Holy One, you claim us as your beloved from beginning to end. Reassured and emboldened by this good news, we uplift our blessings and concerns to you this day, knowing nothing separates us from you and your love for us. Our hearts hurt at the news of violence happening close to home and afar. We pray for all affected by violence here in Waterloo Region, by shootings in Highland Park in the U.S. and in Copenhagen, Denmark. May those grieving a loss or a separation of any kind be comforted, and may we find concrete ways to denounce violence and become peacemakers. Amid sorrow and pain, help us to hold fast to what is true, beautiful and good. Shield our joy and hope to be found in one another. Holy One, keep watch over all those who have been uprooted from home and seek safety in unfamiliar, even inhospitable places. Keep watch over those who cannot escape abusive relationships or difficult circumstances. Keep watch over those who have nowhere to go. Creator God, we hear the laments of our desecrated earth, yet we continue to wreak havoc on our environment. We hear the news of floods in Australia and India, a landslide in Peru, and a tropical storm in Nicaragua and El Salvador. We cannot deny the ways our changing climate is reshaping our daily existence, often most effectly affecting those who are marginalized. Help us to be accountable. May we recognize and work together in this interconnected world where our actions affect others. So much seems irreconcilable at times in our families, homes, nations, creation. Let us turn over to you what feels insurmountable or impossible in our lives. Continue to remind us that your love and grace have no end. We pray for all those living amid turmoil, division, and dispute including our siblings in the United Kingdom during this turbulent political time. Bring a sense of humility and compassion to world leaders so they look beyond self-interests and better serve their citizens, especially the oppressed and the vulnerable. And give us the courage to claim the spaces where we are leaders and to name our responsibilities in caring for one another. And so in this spirit of caring, in a time of sacred silence, we lift up all that has been shared together this day, as well as those prayers held deep within our hearts. Holy One, keep expanding our capacity to love one another so we may recognize you every place we go and in everyone we meet. Help us, to the help us to love the world as fiercely and tenderly as you do. May it be so. Amen. And so our closing hymn this morning is again in the Voices United Red Hymnal, number 639.
friends, our service is ended. And just as the flame is a symbol of Jesus' real presence with us in our worship, so the smoke is a symbol of the Spirit going with us, the very being of God absorbed into our everyday living. be seated and as we prepare to go now into the world inspired by the extravagant love of God may we live generously with open hands loving one another and reflecting love in the world and as you go this day may the abundant love of God surround you may the extravagant grace of Jesus Christ sustain you and may the constant presence of the Holy Spirit inspire and encourage you in all that you do. Amen. Thank you, Cynthia, for giving us such a wonderful way to end our worship. Again, thanks to all who have been here today, those in the sanctuary, those in line. Uh, in just a moment, I'm going to end our Facebook recording, so thanks to those who have been with us that way, and I'll be ending the Zoom recording and meeting as well. So we hope to see you another week. Again, love to see you in person in the weeks ahead, but have a wonderful summer, and thanks for being with us this morning.